All right, I'm here with uh, Colin Nomak and Johnny Nathan. Um, good tournament last week, Friday, on Boxing Fire Promotions. Obviously, we wanted to... What do you mean, good tournaments? Great tournament. Great tournament. It was a fucking sensational tournament. What's wrong with you? No, I mean, it was like there wasn't a spare seat in the house. No, I'm just, you know, you know, just... Good tournaments. Yeah. Like, okay. Like, I'm like, is there something wrong with the quality or what? No, no. It was good. It was good. <laughs> it was great. No, yeah, listen, what a way to start the year. Um... You know, we had three fights being pulled. I'm sure we're gonna. I'm sure yeah. that's part of the agenda now. Um, and I remember Thursday. I mean, I, I phoned Larry um, when Caden fell ill and he couldn't fight. Uh, I said to Larry, "It's like today's one of those days where I just don't want to be in boxing." You know, like we we're at the weigh-in. Katlecho's opponent just fell to pitch again, um, and then obviously the disaster with DJ. And like I was just looking, like what the fuck. And then I thought to myself, you know what, like. It'll be what it is, um, and I woke up Friday morning and I was thinking, you know, we still have a great fight card. We sold out. Um, we've got some excellent talents on the fight card, and let's just go with it. And we did, and it just turned out to be a magical evening for Boxing 5, and what a great way to start 2024. All right, let's go from the bottom to the top. Let's start, let's do the tournament because it's not like it's nine fights, it's six fights now. It's a little bit more palatable to talk about in an interview. Um, <laughs> we, we, we start with Luco. Um, I thought his performance was okay. Um, he did what he needed to do to get the win. I'm sure he's going to look to take it from there. He fought a more experienced opponent than him. Yeah, I mean, he got put over in the first round. So how's that for like the opening bout, you know? Showed a lot of grit and determination to win the rounds and win a split decision, which I thought was valid. Um, but he's also a very charismatic guy. He's like one of those guys that you just, you draw drawn to because he's such a cute looking kid. Um, and he's got, and he can bite down hard. And I think he showed that with Sean Ness, you know? Um, he's just obviously one of the products of our baby. He's a baby of our products you know um started his career there two fights now with boxing five and obviously we're looking to build that um but it's just a likable guy and also very very determined to win you know it's not easy in a four-round fight getting put over in the first round and still getting up and, and getting a split decision so i've got to give credit to him and him sean ness um just you know i love the kids so it is what it is you know i'm very happy you won yeah, he's generation one of the hot box uh, amateur club uh, that's going on here. Jay Luko, who turned pro under that system. Uh, next bout of the evening, uh, Joshua Feldman. Um, a very good performance. I mean, obviously he gets his opponent out in two rounds. It's a, it's a good momentum builder for him, though. Yeah, well, look, I mean, it's no secret. Josh is the baby of the team. He's 19 years old. And we're still going to take it very, very slow with him. Um, he got rid of a guy that he was supposed to get rid of. Um, but he's showing a lot more, pos you know, he's slowing down. He's thinking about, he's more calculating. He's not rushing in. Um, walked his opponent down, a very, very good mature performance. Like the way he touches up and hits down to the body. Um, Head of Vormans always says to me that he's an old boxing soul in a young teenager's body, you know. Um, so I was very impressed with him. I think, you know, he's still very green and very raw, but we're taking our time with him. And just, yeah, I, I, see, I see the improvements. You know, I see the confidence building. Big shout out to Blood, Sweat and Tears in Cape Town for looking after him before he comes up here for his camp. So I just, I think he's one of the stars for the future. Again, I'm taking it very slow. He's only 19. Um, and, and I think that's one of the problems here in South African boxing is that we tend to, to rush our prospects. You know, you, you need to build and nurture and, and groom fighters. And I think that's what's lacking in South African boxing. So I'm going to take my time. He's, he's, like I said, he's our baby, um, but very impressed and very, very impressed with his performance. All right, talking about nurturing boxers, a, a great product of that is obviously Ishmael Kadri, who's now gone 7-0, and registered a second career knockout. I mean, literally, uh, just before the bell goes, he hits him with that sweeping right hand after using that body work the whole entire fight. You know, you and I have spoken outside of uh, SA Boxing Talk interviews that we've always said that he can punch a lot more than his record suggests. He hits hard, he, he does load up at, at times, which, which obviously I can be a bit critical of. But he's one of those guys who just keeps leveling up. You know, he said to me in the corner at the end of the third round, because coach, I don't feel like myself. And I gave him a tongue lashing. I said, look, I don't want to fucking hear that again. Don't like get back to yourself then, you know, find yourself. Um, I still thought he was winning the rounds comfortably. Got caught with a good right hand in the fourth or the fifth round. Um, I thought it was a good wake up call for him. Um, but he's one of those guys, you know, at the age of 22, he just keeps getting better and better and better. Now, now we're going to take him up to eight rounds. You know, at the end of the year, we want to be fighting for an African championship with him. We've told, we've told him that. I'm very excited because, you know, we've had him from fight one and it's just, 
just it's just an amazing talent seeing him just develop and grow and and um zane big shout out to zane as well looks after him in cape town before he comes up for his game so just it's just great to see something that you're building and you're just turning into something special it's great all right, moving on to about number four, not about that you're involved in, but the, about that Boxing Five and uh, Luduma Lomati is involved in. Becky Maitse knocks out, well, stops, Awonkatini. Were you expecting that? And what do you think of the fight? No, so that was actually about number five. Um, so, no, I thought, it, I thought it was a very, to be honest with you, going into the fight, I thought it was, I thought Tini would have the edge, to be honest. Like, Tini's done a lot of sparring in my gym and, you know, he's really looked the part. And I, I just thought, he, he didn't look himself in the fight. And I know there was a mugging that took place, which we need to mention him and Bess got, you know, they got mugged. Um, and I think that affected him. But equally so, Becky was just, he was really good in the night. I mean, he literally took Tini apart in the second round and then kind of wilted him down. In fact, I know it was a third round stoppage, but it kind of looked like a fight had been going on for rounds and rounds and rounds because obviously you're there in the corner and you're helping and you see the fight unraveling. Um, but, you know, Becky's one of those kids, and we have to make mention, his dad's the South African junior featherweight champion, Bongani Mishlangu. Um, if I was Bongani, I'd avoid that kid. <laughs> um, but he's definitely a star. And I mean, I think he's one of the kids that we kind of really need to sit up and take notice of. And, and I think he's got a really, really good future. Fights like his dad, that switch hitting style, very cool and calm. Um, I'd like to see him shorten up his punches a little bit more, though. Um, throws them a bit wide sometimes, but... A very good talent, I agree. All right, let me go back to bout number four because I missed that one. I actually was, while you're talking, I'm calculating and I realized Tristan Trutzer was in there at bout number four and he fought uh, uh, Bukwasa who stopped him. But the fight was like ebbing and flowing. One, <laughs> one second, uh, Tristan was knocking him out and then the other second, Bukwasa, and eventually he ended up uh, stopping Tristan. Yeah, it was, it was one of those like seesaw fights, you know, it was like kind of was like give and take and it was, it was an exciting fight. Um, I just thought conditioning and, and Tristan's weight cut got to him. Um, and, and no disrespect to uh, Basaka. I mean, he fought a good fight. He won the fight. Uh, very entertaining for the crowd. Um, a little disappointed in Tristan, in just in terms of his performance. I love the kid. But I think he needs to make some serious you know, commitment decisions and stuff going forward. Um, but there was just, there was also a very crowd pleasing flight, you know. Uh, I had the crowd on the edge of the sea. I mean, I was just like, and I remember in the third round when they were guessing, um, in the fourth round actually, Bernie said to me, he said to me, Cole, like, is this a six round? So I said, yeah, it is a six round. And he said to me, what round are we in? And he said to me, four, and they were huffing, puffing. I said, no, this is round four. And he whispers in me, he goes, fuck it. Mm -hmm. You know, because they were both gassing, you know. And I know Sean took it very, very hard, you know. Like, you know, you've got to take losses hard. But, you know, Tristan's a lovely kid. Um, if he decides to come back, we'll, we'll look at ways of bringing him back. But I think he needs, a, needs to really kind of think about what he wants to do. And was like, oh, listen, it was such an in intriguing, entertaining fight. You know, it's just like I'm saying, it was one of those fights where guys were on the edge of the seats from round one. All right, yeah, it was. And uh, as a neutral, I mean, watching a fight like that, uh, that's, that's what you come to a venue to watch, an uh, all-out slugfest uh, where both guys look like they're going to win and lose at the same time. Um, let's move over to what became the main event of the night, which was originally supposed to be slated as the co-main event. Kane Faree set the house on fire with a second-run knockout of uh, Kutluan or Kaketsi. Talk us through that performance. Yeah, I mean, listen, you know, like... I think you were standing around me afterwards when, you know, Ken and I were having a quick chat and, and I, I said to him, like, I'm a believer, you know, like his 45 degree angle hook, that left hook, the way he draws the guy in, it's just, it's beautiful to watch. Um, you know, Kane said to me, he calls me Uncle Carl, I hate guys calling me Uncle Carl, he says to me, Uncle Carl, uh, we gonna, I'm going to sell this place out. I'm like, okay, cool, sold it out. Ged Strahan said to me, oh, the fight will go one or two rounds. I was like, oh, Ged, he's strong and tough. You know, I thought he'd get a stoppage around like four or five, you know. First round puts him down. And, and there's, this, there's this part of me, because I was standing in the back, I obviously wished the guys well before they fought. And I got in the ring and, you know, I was very happy for Kane and, and Ged. But what happened was either in the first or second knockdown, Ged, because I was looking in the corner, and Ger turned around to someone, and I think it could have been his wife, and he just smiled. He gave like a naughty boy smile saying, the smile kind of indicated to me like, yep, I told you so. So breathtaking. I mean, you know, now we're moving Kane. I mean, I'm, I don't want to talk out of turn. I need to sit Kane and, and Ger down. Larry and I have been in comms, um, you know, communicating with the sanctioning body on, on, on our next move. So we're looking at bringing a championship belt on the line, which I know Kane wants. Um, 
But I just, it was a spectacular performance. And, you know, they said it. So now I'm believers. You know, I still think we've got to take our time with him. He's still very, very young. Uh, still has a lot to learn. But literally, whoever we're putting in front of him, he's just, you know, he's taking apart. So you can't blame the kid. You know, obviously now it's, it's you know, like, is it also a disservice to him, you know, in terms of growing his boxing career, that he's blowing these guys out? Well, he can only beat what's in front of him. So I think the next step is now to obviously put him in with someone who's hopefully going to give us rounds. Um, but with that kind of timing and that kind of power, it's going to be hard to see anyone standing in front of him, you know, going rounds and going the distance, especially on that check hook. And I said it to you before, yeah. he's got the best check hook, left hook, 45 degree angle, left hook in South Africa right now. I mean, it's going to be hard pressed to beat on, on that position. Of course, Kane Faria, a rising star. And, I mean, as soon as you guys obviously sit down and uh, have a talk about what's next, we'll sit down also with uh, Kane and see what he's got to say about it because he's obviously moving up through the ranks really fast. I know there was talks, and uh, he mentioned in a pre-fight interview, um, he said starting with the I, ending with the F. And, uh, you know, I, I like the way he put it to yeah. me. Yeah, so, I mean, listen, I mean, you know, there, there, there's already calls on, on social media that, you know, you can't fight anyone in South Africa, you can't fight anyone in Africa. He's still a baby. We got to we got to take our time with him. But you know those championships are going to come. Um, and and big respect to to Coach G and the team. You know I joked on social media the other day. I'm sure you read that comment that you know, Chet and I've come a long way since he since he wanted to shoot me. Uh, we joke about it now. But um, listen, they've just got an amazing dynamic, and I'm just very blessed to be part of the journey and to be partnership with them. And it's just very exciting for me. You know, it's, it's great to see a product that you believe in and just see that product and brand just grow and grow and grow. And I can tell you right now that this kid's onto something big. Um, again, like we've got to keep it in perspective, but I, I do think we've got a very, very good talent here with Chet Stratum, I do. I wanted to ask if you if you did watch his pre-fight, I'm uh, sorry, post-fight interview that he did drop. Um, he mentioned, yeah, um, course, you know, yeah. obviously his his choice in choosing boxing five, but ultimately choosing no doubt management to, to which he filtered through to boxing five was uh, a great decision for him. And he mentioned, uh, you know, obviously something else is there as well. What do you think of that? Well, well, listen, I mean, obviously I followed it because I have to follow what's going on in the sport of boxing and I follow your stuff. So yeah, I mean, listen. Uh, he took a dig. I thought the dig was entirely up to him. It is what it is. He's got his opinions entitled to it. Just know when you come into my gym as a, as a fight manager, I'm always going to greet you, Aiden. I mean, you know, other managers might just diss you and not even acknowledge or greet you. But, you know, I'll always say hello to you. So in terms of him saying what he said, it's his opinions entitled to it. You can't get people to be contrived and say what they, what you want them to say. Fighters have a voice. They're entitled to speak what they want to speak and say what they want to say. Um, all you have to do is take a look at Ryan Garcia. I mean, so at the end of the day, you give us this platform, you give athletes the platform to talk. They, they shouldn't be told what to say and what not to say and, and be contrived about what they're going to say. So inevitably, big respect to Kane. He said it like it is. That's what he feels. It's his opinion. And I support that 100%. Obviously, I support it because, you know, he, he signed with us. All right, thanks, Cole. I appreciate every single boxing manager that greets me. Uh, I must say, yeah, you've always uh, been there as well, so that's 100%. Let's move over to uh, a topic, uh, DJ Creel, who missed weight substantially, quite by quite a bit, and he had a few health complications as a result of a bad weight cut. Um, what next for him? I mean, it's a difficult position now. Yeah, I mean, listen, we're all disappointed. I mean, I think DJ himself is distraught. Um, I think, look... You know, we need to show love and support to DJ, which obviously I still love the kid very, very much. But he needs to make a decision now. Um, he needs to make a decision not only for himself and his family, but also to the sport of boxing. You know, you can't disrespect the players around who look after you as a team and do that. There was a lot of time and money invested in this main event, which, you know, obviously fucked out. So, you know, we do love DJ. Uh, nothing changes, but he's going to make some hard decisions. Now, the question is, do I want to work with him right now the condition he's in? No. You know, you can't come into camp so heavy and expect people to dance around you when, when you're disrespecting not only the sport, but yourself. So I think it's time for him to take a look at himself. And I think he will. I think this is the ultimate wake-up call for him. Um, you know, I saw his interview with him saying that, you know, he knows he's got discipline issues with his diet. 
And he did. He landed up in hospital with severe kidney issues. So um, he was at the event. He took responsibility for, for his actions. I mean, he knows I love him. I put my arms around him and I hugged him and he was in pain. You know, he's like, my kidneys are really fucking sore, coach. Um, so inevitably now, I think it's time for him, to, for his body to just recover from the shock. And then he needs to make some decisions. You know, we, Larry, myself, Riaz, we, Luduma, we, we are. We're not going anywhere. But, you know, can we work with an athlete that just is just so grossly out of shape? No. So inevitably, he's got some, some choices and thinking to do. And I think, knowing DJ, that he will make the right adjustments and, and decisions um, because he loves boxing with his whole heart. I don't think this is the end of DJ Krill. I do think we're at a crisis moment now with his career. But inevitably, you know, a crisis moment will be, be past. All right. Well, what's your expectation of him now? I know that you say that, you know, it's up to him. And, but what, what would your, as a manager and as an advisor, what would your expectation be? Heal up. Heal up. Um, it's going to take a couple of weeks for his body to regulate. And then, you know, just get serious about your, your diet. I mean, when he gets to the gym, he trains hard, he spars hard, he can do rounds. And, but if you're not worried about how you look after your body and you manage your weight, you're never going to make it. You know, so if you look back to his history when he started, he was always on weight, was always in shape. He would get a bit chubby outside, but when he'd start dieting and getting ready, knowing that there was a contest, he would, he would make a plan. Um, and I think that's the adjustments that I would like to see to him to take himself seriously. Because I, I know that he respects boxing and I know he loves boxing. And I know he loves doing the sport of boxing. And I think inevitably, I think I'd like to see those adjustments. You know, taking your career seriously, taking your diet seriously and, and not having this block of, you know, I'm going to eat all this food and then I can lose it because we, we saw the result, what happened last week. His body just gave in and he just simply couldn't cut the weight and he landed up in hospital. And it's, and it's scary. It's frightening. And I want to ask, ideally... Should he get his health back in order and obviously work towards, at some point, uh, getting back to weight division? Would you still want it, it to be at Superfly or do you want him to actually, you know, cut down to fly again and make that uh, his priority? It's definitely one of those divisions. Um, if you look at his frame and his size, uh, those would be the divisions, you know. And again, you, you know, it's, it's about taking his weight cut and, weight di and his diet seriously. And had he made it and taken, made, made those decisions and taken it seriously, last week wouldn't have been an issue. He would have made weight, no problem. And, and, and happy and comfortable that he would have beaten Tabang Ramakole as well? No question, yes. All right, because I, I, I noticed that uh, in the ring, Tabang had a, obviously, a, he, he felt that he was ready to beat DJ on the night. Um, obviously, you, you and DJ's corner, so you'd and you planned on how to beat Tabang, so you think completely differently. And, and I've got to apologize to... Um, to Tabang. I mean, I saw him at the, the way in. He looked heartbroken. And, and you know, on half a boxing five, like, we, we got it for him. So we are going to feature him on the next event. Um, and that's the commitment that boxing fives made to him and, and, and Larry, you know. And obviously, it's, it's not nice. It's not a nice feeling to let someone down. I would have liked for them to contest, but obviously, it never happened. Um, I was confident that, that DJ would have beaten him, but now we'll never know. Now it's just... It is what it is. We'll have to, like I'm saying, we have to sit down. I want DJ to heal and recover. His body's taken a knock from last week. And we'll, we'll see what's next. All right, 100%. That pretty much wraps up uh, Boxing Fire Promotions. Thank you again to all the players that are involved, uh, particularly Larry Weinstein, Riaz. Um, yeah, and I, and I just want to say thanks to the whole team, the whole social media team as well. It was a great buzz. And Hayden, it wasn't a good show. It was a fucking great show. It was a no, great no, show. I mean, that's how I was surprised my it's mic like was working saying, so well. It's like me saying you're a good oak. You're a great oak. <laughs> great oak. You're a great oak. Yeah. 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 If you put it in that context, then I fully understand what you're trying to say. Yeah, in fact, this week, I'm going to meet with uh, the boys and we, we're going to discuss. We've got a great headliner coming up uh, for our next event can't talk too much about it okay. got some meetings this week but it's going to be great um, and I expect another sellout so it's just going to be great and obviously we've set the bar now so now it's you know it's very interesting alright great dynamic great dynamic Viva Cole and uh, we'll catch you at the next one thank you very much Cole